Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. Welcome to a pick-me-up episode of this show where I am going to answer and discuss two questions from listeners today. These are questions that people submitted to me either through Instagram DM at Jen Glantz or they sent it straight to my inbox, jenglantz.com, which by the way, I encourage you to do if you have questions about life, about challenges, about things going on and you want me to anonymously answer them on the show for you, send them to me in a message. I am more than happy to answer them. Every month I do one episode called the Pick Me Up episode where I am answering your questions. I'm excited for this week's episode and these questions because I think they're relatable. I think that either maybe you've been through some of these things or you know people who have been through some of these things. And that's the cool part about these types of episodes is that a lot of the things we're addressing, they're things that people want to know and need to know about right now. So we'll get into these questions coming up. But how in the world are you, my friends? I am doing pretty good over here. This past couple weekends ago, a few weekends ago, based on when you're listening to this episode, I went on a family trip to Newport, Rhode Island with Adam's family. I had never been to Newport, Rhode Island before. We went from Friday to Sunday morning, and it was absolutely gorgeous. I didn't know very much about Newport, Rhode Island before I went. Adam would tell me for years, because he went there a lot growing up, that it's beautiful, it's so peaceful, it's calming, it's just gorgeous. And I was like, okay, I don't think it's going to be for me. It was so incredible as a place. I mean, first of all, it's a very small town. It's a walkable small town. And I love towns that are walkable, towns that you don't have to have a plan. Like you could wake up in the morning and just go for a walk for 30 minutes and end up somewhere awesome. Cities where you have to have a car and drive places make it a lot harder to just sort of explore because you need to have a plan in mind. And I am not a good planner. I'm just a person who likes to wake up and go. So the best cities for me are the cities that you can just walk around. That's why I have loved living in New York City because for the past 10 years, I never had to have a game plan. I would just go out and walk and find myself doing something really fun without any preparation. And I loved Newport for that because you could mostly walk everywhere, which was awesome and incredible. And not only that, but it was just beautiful, fresh air. You know, I think the thing with living in New York City and being here for the entire year of the pandemic is that you're breathing a lot of the city air. And I live right next to a massive highway in Brooklyn. So it's a lot of pollution. I feel like I'm having all these like random sinus issues lately because of just being here with all of this going on. And when we were in Newport, I just forced myself to breathe in the fresh ocean air and that was like a highlight of my trip was just like standing on rocks breathing in fresh air and feeling so great we also did these things called the the tour mansions so you go to like all these old mansions that were owned by the Vanderbilt and all of these people and you go on audio tours of them and it was so incredible I mean some of these mansions look like they are straight from Italy or France and a lot of the things inside of the mansions were imported from these countries and it's just incredible and fascinating we went to the most beautiful mansion called the Marble House in Newport. And it was, it's beautiful. I mean, this house is like, I can't even explain it to you. It's extraordinary, but it was given to one of the Vanderbilts as the 39th birthday present. And I just started laughing at that because it's like this most exquisite, exquisite house. It seemed like a castle inside. And that was the 39th birthday present. I'm just such a curious person and I love finding myself on tours or I love going to museums and just learning all of these new things and like remembering these fun facts. So I loved that. 
Now I'm a vegan. I'm a vegetarian. I'm a, veg- I'm a vegan who eats pizza. So I really don't eat dairy or anything like that except for pizza. So a lot of the food in Newport is mostly fish and lobster and crabs and that's awesome. So I even as a vegan vegetarian, I found so many options there as well. I thought that for a town that's known for its seafood, they had so many other types of food as well. So it was a great town to go to, especially right now because it's a lot of outdoors. It's a lot of you know walking. It's a lot of things that are socially distant. It's not a crowded place to be. And it's some place that we could drive to, which was also really nice because it was just a quick getaway that we were able to drive to. So that was so much fun. And Goofy came with us. We, went, we stayed at a dog-friendly hotel. And Goofy is the love of my life. I'm like making sure she's not hearing me talk about her, but I love her so much. We have extreme separation issues, meaning we don't leave each other's side. And when we do, both of us get very sad. Now, one of us, me, can handle that sadness because I'm an adult, but Goofy has extreme separation anxiety. So we went to dinner two nights. We had to hire a babysitter for Goofy who came to the hotel room and sat on the couch next to Goofy for the two hours each night that we were away. And it was really tough. I'll be honest with you. The first night we left her, I cried. I like left her with the babysitter and like I was hysterically crying at him. I had to like console me for a good five minutes. His mom was like, do you want to just like go back? But I pulled myself together. Goofy, on the other hand, could not, was not okay. I mean, the whole time we were gone, she was like crying. There was one point when she went to the door and scratched the door and cried at the door for a while and the babysitter sat on the floor with Goofy at the door, which I just thought was so fascinating and so cute. And it's cute because we did this, we we went through like a dog sitting app and the dog sitting app, they like send you pictures and then they put together this like montage of the experience of the dog and the dog babysitter. And if you watch Goofy's montage of her and the babysitter, it's like this saddest pictures of Goofy just like crying at the door. So that was pretty interesting. I mean, never in my wildest dreams that I think I would have a dog, let alone have a dog that I'd hire a babysitter for because I loved her so much. I didn't want her to be alone and stress herself out by crying. And if you're like, Jen, come on, leave the dog alone. The dog will cry and then eventually calm down. You don't know Goofy. The other day we left her for 45 minutes, which is the longest we've left her in a really long time. And we have a camera in our house. So when we left her alone in our house, we watched the camera and literally the entire 45 minutes, she barked and howled and screamed. So she has extreme separation anxiety. So we're going to work on this. We took her to the vet today for her annual checkup. And I asked the vet about this and she was like, well, here's what you're doing wrong. You're leaving her for 45 minutes. Like start off by leaving her for five minutes. But if you know me and the more you listen to the show, the more you will know me, I'm like, I go from a zero to a hundred. There's no in between. So I went from like not leaving her for more than a minute for an entire year to leaving her for an hour, which was a disaster to hiring a babysitter. And that was also a disaster, but it was interesting. And ironically, it was, you know, just really cute to have Goofy have a babysitter and Adam's parents were there so they brought their dog and the dog was also with Goofy and the babysitter and the dog does not need a babysitter but was kind enough to stay with Goofy. So that's a little bit about our weekend in Newport, Rhode Island. If you've been there, drop me a line. Tell me if you like it. I I really loved it. Like I would really love to go back there. And this was a place where before we went, I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's going to be for me. And it's a place where I'm like so incredibly excited to hopefully go back one day. And that's awesome. I love any place outdoors, any place that you can walk around. Also, if you're like, I've I've never been to Newport, Rhode Island, but I know other cities that meet those qualifications, send me a note. One of my goals this year is to plan a solo vacation for myself, just like a little solo trip where I can go for a couple of days and mostly do nothing but walk around and explore. And if that could be in a small town, a small walkable town, that would be awesome because that's ideal for me. I'm not a good driver, not the best at driving, can't parallel park. That's a whole other story. And I would love to go away to a town that I could just like sort of walk around and has that small town vibe. Maybe I'll make some friends at a coffee shop kind of thing. That would be goals for me. Let's dive into the questions of the week. The first question comes from Jax. Jax says that her and one of her family members has been constantly arguing with each other. Every single time they have a conversation, it turns into an argument and she's not sure how to handle it. She's tried to express herself, try to talk it out with them, but it just seems like every conversation turns into a fight. It's made even worse because that family member doesn't live close to them, so she's not sure how to handle it. She says, Jen, please help. I can't stop 
fighting with my family members. This is so unlike me and I'm not even sure how to rectify the situation. Every conversation from, hey, how was your day? turns into a full-blown fight and I just don't want to have these things happen with my family members anymore. What do you advise? Jen, please pick me up. Jax. I can completely relate to that, as I'm sure a lot of people listening can as well. And a lot of people will tell you to put things like boundaries in place and things like that. But boundaries don't work with family. Family, everything just feels a whole lot different. I know a big thing that I often do with my family is I take everything out on them. Sometimes my mom will call me and say, how was your day? And even though she had nothing to do to impact my day or my mood or my stress level, I take it all out on her and I'll shout back and say, what do you mean? How was my day? Or I'll just do something outrageous. And oftentimes, you know, the people we love, we feel like we can be the most comfortable with, the most vulnerable with, the most emotional with, and we take a lot out on them. I know I do that a lot. So what I would say, Jax, is start by pressing the pause button here and analyzing the situation. Where is the tension coming from? Is it coming from underlying issues that you haven't resolved? Is it coming from one person's stress level from other areas of their life that they're bringing into the situation? Is it coming from the fact that maybe you two are talking too much and there's just a, a distance that needs to be in place for a little bit of time between you and that family member? But start to figure out what the underlying issue is because it's never what you think it is. You know, when my mom will ask me a simple question like, how was your day? Or did you do that? That thing I've been asking you to do 17 times, I'll start yelling at her and starting a fight with her. And it's not about that question. It's never about that question. It's about so much more. So if any of you are listening and you're having tension or arguments or just disagreements with somebody who means a lot to you, somebody you love, Rather than continue those fights, continue those disagreements, carry around that tension like you have a backpack of rocks that you can't put down. Pause for a second and start to pick apart what is really going on here because there is so much more that contributes to tension than what is on the surface. So my advice to you, Jack, is to pick it apart. Pick it apart and figure out what's really making each of you feel this way. And if you know your portion, ask your family member what they think is really going on here to have that honest conversation with themselves to figure out why both of you can't maintain a calm conversation because it's not going to be what you think it is. It's always always something different. It's always something more. And there's always a solution. That's my advice to you, Jax. Question number two comes from Danielle. And this is a question that I was nodding my head the entire time I was reading it. Danielle says, Jen, help. I'm really trying to get healthier with my food options. I find that I never have anything in the fridge. And then when I am hungry, I either turn to something that's not a real meal, but instead is a chocolate bar, or I turn to takeout. I have spent so much money in the past couple of months on takeout food. All of that is contributing to me just not feeling feeling healthy and my wallet feeling even more unhealthy. Jen, pick me up. What do I do? Danielle, it's like you read my mind. A goal of mine has to has been to eat healthier. And a big reason why I want to do that is because I notice I feel better when I'm putting good things in my body. And I notice I don't feel good. I don't have energy. I don't have motivation when I have finished the entire bag of chips that I was supposed to dip in the hummus but never opened up the hummus. Something I've been really trying to do that I'll be honest with you, I have failed at and I'm trying to get better at is not to meal prep because I'm not there yet. And maybe you're not there yet too. You know, a lot of people go from like, I, people go from like ordering takeout to suddenly being like, I'm going to meal prep. And then they don't maintain it because that's a huge thing to commit to. It's a huge next step. So rather than meal prepping, which I'm not there yet, one of the things I've really tried to do is creating a menu for myself this week. And I took this idea from a friend of mine. A friend of mine does not eat out very much during the month, maybe like four times a month, four to six times a month, She'll do takeout or she'll get food from somewhere else. But the rest of the time she cooks. And I asked her, I go, how do you figure out the time to do this? How do you plan for this? Like, how do you make it interesting in your life? And she told me about this menu idea where she'll start off the weekend planning out the menu for the next week ahead. And when doing that, she'll try to figure out, okay, how do I maximize my groceries? So how do I spend, let's say, $100 in groceries for meals for the entire week and the weekend? And how do I figure out how to make the cauliflower 
end up in four meals for the week. And I thought that was very interesting. Planning ahead what you're going to eat allows you to take the stress off of not knowing, but also allows you to sort of plan ahead, have something to look forward to, and have the time to pick out meals that you're actually actually excited about making and consuming. So I've done this very lightly, and I'll be honest, like I haven't fully integrated this. I'm still making a ton of mistakes with eating healthy meaning like I'll have good intentions for the week and then find myself ordering pizza every night because I'm just too lazy to cook. But it has helped me to sort of plan out, okay, at least what am I going to eat for dinner Monday to Wednesday? And then what are like two or three healthy breakfast options I could whip together in under five minutes? And then for lunch, like what are some, what is something I can make really fast that's going to keep me full for the whole afternoon? Another thing I was inspired to do is to look up recipes of the favorite things I like to order out. So for example, I love a certain smoothie at a place and the smoothie is so expensive. It's $11 for a smoothie. The smoothie is by no means a large. It's like $11 for the small, $14 for the large. And I splurged last week and got it because I wasn't feeling great. So I got the smoothie. And then on my walk home from getting the smoothie, I was like, Jen, you could make four of these smoothies for $11 worth of ingredients all throughout the week. And you can make it. There's nothing in the smoothie that you can't do, Jen. And that was really mo motivating for me. So Sometimes just picking apart also the things you like to order out and figuring out how you could make your own version of them. Because oftentimes when you're cooking at home, you might be cooking healthier than let's say a restaurant is cooking when you're ordering out. So look, don't go from zero to 100. Don't pull a gen here. And instead, think about, okay, how can I cut back eating out X amount? And during that time, how can I meal plan over meal prep? And maybe you're all about meal prepping and that is awesome. I'm trying to get there eventually. But right now, I'm about meal planning. So start with that. Planning out the menu for your week. By the way, a fun plug here. One of my coaching clients is starting a business that's launching this month called Global Plates, where she does that for you. She creates menus for you with awesome, awesome different types of food. The first menu she's dropping is Mexican food. So check that out also for just inspiration. But I'm somebody who does not like to cook. I do not like cooking at all. So I am like the number one Googler of easy things to make in under 10 minutes because I don't have time and I don't want to be in the kitchen and cook. So I find really easy meals that I just plan ahead to sort of figure out. And a lot of that includes like throwing a ton of vegetables into a into like a pan and cooking them, making some sort of rice or grain or pasta and then figuring out some sort of protein and then there you go. That's my dinner back to back for two nights. I saw somebody making a pasta salad on Instagram yesterday. That's going to be my lunch for a couple of days. So really just planning over prepping is the best first step, Danielle. All right, my friends, thank you for listening to this week's Pick Me Up episode. New episode coming back for you next week. And as always, if you like this podcast, it would mean a tremendous amount for you to leave us a review. Just scroll down and leave the show a review. Also, come hang out with us in the secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. Say hello on Instagram at Jen Glance at Any Younger. And as always, I'm just so happy that you're here listening. It means the absolute world to me, and I will be back with a new episode before you know it next week. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified on your phone when that episode drops. All my love, Jen Glance. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.